Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. This is Kendall Travis, and she is a celebrity retail um, estate uh, person who is here today to teach you the ins and outs about real estate and business entrepreneurship. She has a lot of great information she wants to share with you. And she even talks about mindset and the importance of mindset. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. And this is the Happiness uh, Wellness Expo that's going to be in New Jersey in March. And they wanted us to let you know that they'll have over 100 exhibitors and they'll have people from all over the nation come in. And it's going to be a very big expo and it's going to be in Livingston, New Jersey. Jersey, and it will have all the information in our description box. So take a look at it, see what it's about. And it's going to be a great time. And a lot of doctors and coaches and a lot of professionals are going to be there. And people are just going to get a lot of benefits from it. So check it out. And we'll see you there. Now, Kendall, I am so excited to have you on the show. You, you know, we had a very uh, long discussion before the show and you had so much information that's so valuable for people to, to know about. Now, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do first? Um, thank you, Stacey. I really appreciate you having me on. I'm Kendall Travis. I'm with a real estate company here in Dallas called Dave Perry Miller. Um, I started my career actually in New York. You and I were talking about both being in New York um, and I was got licensed there. I am still actively licensed there, but my real estate career, as most people know, New York City, it's all high rises. So I was selling condos, co-ops, et cetera. Um, and I was doing that for nine years. I think I was there. And then I moved back home to my home state of Texas. I'm from Dallas, Texas originally. And I had a real hard time kind of navigating where I fit. I started out kind of in housing and then I was getting a lot of questions that I wasn't familiar with. I didn't understand what French drains were. I didn't know what pier and beam was. People were asking if it was slab, can they install gas? I, I was out of my element. <laughs> so what I, I lived in a condo in Dallas and what I realized was, you know, why am I trying to create a new wheel when I can just sell what I know. And so right. I was, I'm going to sell condos because that's all I know. It's all I've ever sold. And that's how my career got restarted in Dallas. And so I, I had a bumpy road. Um, I've been here now for four years. Um, part of that was the pandemic, which was also, that was just terrible altogether. Um, you know, being locked up, it was, we weren't locked up actually that long. So yay yeah. Texas, but um, it was boring. I, I got uh, my GRI, which is graduate realtor. I don't even Institute, I guess. So mm -hmm. I pretty much have a doctorate in real estate because I had nothing else to do. <laughs> um, so yeah. So once I kind of got out of the pandemic, that's when I think I realized I just need to stay in my lane and do what I was good at and what I know and what I've got a history of doing. And so that's how I got into selling condos in the Dallas market. Um, while I was in, while we were all in lockdown, yeah. I purchased a condo in Dallas because um, I was renting in a condo in Dallas. I purchased a condo, did a full renovation um, got shut down on the renovation because uh, apparently all the contractors had COVID. Ha, ha, ha. They didn't, but it was a, a real interesting um, navigation with the HOA board. Mm -hmm. um, Re-upped that renovation. And then I also met my husband while I was here. There was a lot of activity. Um, and we moved in in July of 2020. And I had moved my husband, who is living in a home, a regular home. I got him into the condo lifestyle. He, uh, we have a stepson. And so it was just, there was a lot of moving parts, you know, newly yeah. married. He has a son. We move into a condo. The renovation was, you know, traumatic as they all are. Right. Um, but it all ended up, it, we are happy as clams. And it's ironic because now I'm like, oh, honey, I'm like, you know, we should get a house. He's like, are you crazy? I would never move. Love it. <laughs> so he, he's really acclimated to this lifestyle, which you and I were talking about previously. Yeah. Living in a condo, living in a high rise, it's a lifestyle. It's 
it's a community. There are so many pluses to it. And I think my value add in being in this specific niche is not only, you know, I live it, I love it. You have to really understand it. And I think be with an agent that also lives it to understand the concept that the HOA board, you have to be okay with giving up a little bit of control. Yeah. So I think that is the big elephant in the room that people get really nervous about are the HOA board, you know, the HOA, the board, you know, the board has control over what's happening, but I'm like, it's kind of like government. So to say, um, you can pipe in and you can kind of form your own little community to try to sway them. Yeah. Um, But overall, you know, the board is there to take care of the building, you know, to make sure that the building that you're in is maintained, you know, it's like a car, you know, let's make sure that the oil is changed regularly. You know, we're washing the front driveway. We take care of the windows, you know, they do all the things to maintain it. And you're not, you don't do it yourself. You don't have control over it, but you just have to trust that they live there too. And they want to maintain the building too. So I think there's, a lot to learn and to overcome concerns when you're not familiar with that condo lifestyle. Right. The plus side that you and I also were talking about is the community. I mean, it's almost like we live in like the Ritz Carlton, which by the way, you can live in the Ritz Carlton because they have residences here. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, we have neighbors and, you know, we see them here and there. Sometimes people have multiple homes, but it's so nice to have, we have a doctor, we have a judge, we have, you know, people that specialize in holistic healing. I mean, you run the gamut and you have all these interesting conversations yeah. with people in the elevator, in the lobby, at the mailbox. And, you know, to kind of talk a little bit about mindset, it's like, I have all this free information at my fingertips because yeah. I have 85 residents that live in my building that I have really great relationships that I can call on the drop of a hat and say, Oh my gosh, I just ran into this. What do I do? Yeah. So I, I feel like there's so many pluses to this lifestyle to be able to walk to restaurants and the park. And we have a trail right outside of our particular building and we can walk on the Katy trail. I yeah. mean, there's so many wonderful advantages to the lifestyle. I think the scary part is it's just the, it's the fear of the unknown. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's, that's life, right? You making a change is scary, Yeah. but you never know what's on the other side until you pull the trigger and you actually do it. Exactly. Exactly. I kind of feel like as we get older, our needs change also, you know, we start off, you know, and in the beginning, I didn't mind living near everybody, you know, so close. And then I got to a point when I started to get a little bit in my 30s and 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 going into my 40s, then I wanted a little bit of um, space. Now I'm back to the area where I wouldn't mind, you know, making a change and downsizing and, and going in different directions. I feel like we all go through stages. Everybody's wants and needs are different. But I feel like we in life, we all go through that. They say like that every seven years we change and our needs change and our mindset changes. And I think, you know, it's change is a good thing. And I think I think what holds us back, like you said, is the fear, the fear of the unknown, you know, and what's going to happen? You know, what if I don't like this and what happens if this and what happens to that? And, and sometimes you just have to break through that fear, I think, and just do it. You know, if, if something really sparks your attention or your interest and you seem to like, because you know, deep down inside when you see something like a high rise or if you're going to and looking in real estate, you kind of know when you found that place, you know, it's just like, it's just spark. You get a, like a, like a spark, a light bulb, a, a reel of excitement. And you just know that it's the right choice. And you kind of got to go with your gut and you kind of got to just do it and break through that fear. And how do you feel about that? Because you went from, you moved, you lived in many different places. And how did you know when you got to that point where this was where you wanted to be? Well, I think it was a few reasons that pulled me from New York. I've been there for 13 years. I kind of got to a point when I left New York, I was 45, still single. 
Um, and I was kind of like, you know what, I, you know, making money and living that crazy lifestyle mm -hmm. after a while, it's just, you're either made for it or you're not. And I got right. to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm it's getting really, really tiring. My parents were getting older yeah, um, and my father started having issues. So I was flying back and forth to be there with my mom and to kind of help with that because it was new in our, with my parents for them to start having those problems. And right. my brother was in New York city and he had a small child at the time. So I was kind of flying back and forth and I was like, you know, maybe like I just tried Dallas, you know, cause it's like, it's, for, it's familiar. It's where I'm from. It's an easy town. I know it. Yeah. And because I've lived in so many other cities, you know, moving to another city does not scare me at all. Mm -hmm. Moving to a city that I, you know, I from, I was like, great. It's, it's a pit stop. If I hate it, I'll move somewhere else. Right. And, but you know what? It's, it's a, it's a great, I don't want to say excuse. That's probably not a good word, but reason for me to make the choice. I was like, okay, I can slow my life down. Yeah. I can be there for my parents and kind of take a breath. Right. I know the city. So I did it. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get my real estate license because that's my career. Yeah. And we'll just see what happens. Right. So that's kind of how it got started. I didn't initially do anything with my license other than park it with a broker. <laughs> I didn't really actively work it because I was still kind of like, am I staying? Am I going? But right. the one, you know, there was a few things that happened. So right away, you know, you and I were talking like, I re remembered how nice people are here. And it was so, yeah. I was so taken aback by it. Like I forgot like how yeah. nice people are. And then I had one other girlfriend that had moved here, actually two that had moved here from Chicago. And then they introduced me to a few of their girlfriends that they're like, Oh, they're single. They're fun. I mean, Stacy within two months, I think I had like 10 girlfriends <laughs> in 13 years in New York city. If I had five, it was a right. good day. <laughs> so, it was so easy here. So it kind of just felt right. Like I was here with my parents. I was, you know, spending some time with them. I had these girlfriends that were included. They would call me constantly. Oh, yeah. come to this concert, come to the Mavs game, join me to this. And I kind of was like, you know what? I, you know, it's like trying on a shoe. I was like, this is really comfortable. It's really fun. And everybody was so welcoming that yeah. it kind of got me into this whole, well, maybe I'll just like kind of give this real estate thing a go. Right. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic kind of made that stop. But in the meantime, I'd met my husband. But to kind of also touch back on your relocation comment and downsizing, you know, I've always lived in small apartments. But the people, when I bought the condo that I'm in now, I'm in a building that has much more mature people than me. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them had downsized. Right. And I think what it does is it takes some of the stuff yeah. out of your head. Because when you live in a 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 square foot house with four or five, six bedrooms and a workout room and a this, I think your head becomes full of like, oh, we have to clean this room out or we don't do anything with whatever the, the guest room since John's moved out. You start have like, you don't realize you're carrying it. Yeah. And then when you downsize your life becomes so simple, you just have like two rooms or three whatever three bedrooms yeah. people have three bedrooms and one of those rooms is like a media room or an office right but it's your life becomes pretty simple oh. and it like to me it's like a weight off like we use every single room in our house we only have two bedrooms mm -hmm. and one living room and you know all those rooms get used we know where all our stuff is right and no clutter yeah mental clutter is what i would say it's like mental clutter of that so like I think when you're talking about a a downsizer, it takes away maybe some of the mental clutter of maybe you're thinking about your home, Stacey, and you're like, okay, that's like a convincing thing with your husband. Like, 
you know, do you have all these rooms that like aren't really, you know, maybe you have a room where you're just keeping a bunch of storage. It's like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, it'll make you start to go through some of that stuff. Do yeah. you really lose it? And then I think, you know, going back to the mindset comment that I yeah. had was, um, you know, when I'm starting my career here in Dallas, you know, I did get down on myself because I was trying to figure out like, what am I doing? I'm here for my parents. I'm right. making friends. Do I want to have a career? Once I decided, okay, I'm going to give this real estate stuff, you know, thing a go in Dallas. And I had had some trouble doing open houses with homes and not understanding. And I felt like I'm not a professional. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm learning right. on the go. When I finally made the decision to like, okay, I'm going to do condos. That's when I was like, okay, I got this. I understand this. All I have to do is learn these, whatever, 13 buildings. We don't yeah. have a lot um, that are in my neighborhood. And once you get to know them, then you know the building manager. You know the basic HOA rules. Every single one's a little different. I can know most of the financials for most of them. And you understand the general layouts. And I'm like, okay, I can get my head around this. And I can sell this because I understand it. You know, what do they say? You can eat an elephant one piece at a time. Yeah. So it was, once I understood it, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm like halfway down the elephant. I got this. There's not that many buildings and it's right. not that much to chew. And now I've got the confidence that I'm like, okay, this is my niche. This is what I'm good at. I live here. I love it. I understand it. It's easy for me to sell something when I say I'm selling it, but I'm like, I love it. I'm passionate about it. Yeah. If you don't love it. That's cool. It's not for everybody, exactly. but I do. And if you can see it through my eyes and it's something that you're like, wow, she like lit up. I think that lifestyle sounds fun. Yeah. Then it might be for you. Some people are like, that sounds great for you. And maybe you're passionate about it, but not for me. Right. I'm like, well, that's fine. You know, it's not for everybody. Exactly. So I think me mentally getting my mind around making the decision to do what I know, to do what I love, and then turning my mindset to how I grew my business here in Dallas was I also had to start my career totally from the very, very, very beginning. I had no contacts left in Dallas, right? but it was every day I was like, okay, I have to call friends, mm -hmm. which you start out with your immediate circle. Yes. And you know, hey, what are you doing? What's going on? And I'm just calling to say, hi, tell me right. about your husband. Did you go to tennis today? Whatever. Kendall, what are you doing? Are you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm still trying to do real estate. I'm trying to get clients. Like, do you know anybody? Like, is there a networking event I can go to? And it just starts like that. It's so yeah. small. It's like if you start with your immediate sphere of close friends, yeah. the close friends will help you. And they'll say, you know what, Kendall, I want this really cool networking event. It's on finance, but you know, all these women have great jobs. Maybe, maybe they're going to have to move. So you go to that, you introduce yourself to them and then it just grows and you just continually put yourself out there. It's calling. It's, you know, I write a lot of, personal notes to people that touch not just touch me but you know I want to con I want to congratulate them on yeah. oh, you got promoted oh you had a baby you got a new puppy and like I've always been very nice and giving but when I finally learned like you know what when you write a note it tells you for example Stacy if I write you a note like Kendall listened. Yes. And I think where we are in this world today with social media and everybody's thinking on these little tiny snippets, like when you take the time, like you mentally make that note, like when somebody, when you receive a mail, mail with stamp and handwritten, people are like, wow, that person thought about me Yeah, for three to five minutes and wrote it down. Right. And it doesn't take that much time or effort no, and when they call me and they say oh my gosh that meant so much I'm like okay it's it's the art of giving yes right and it's oh, like sure. if I do it selfishly and selfishly because I do like making people feel good and 
whether they were a client, I'll write them a thank you note. Thank you for your business. Like I tell them, I truly appreciate it. You know, not only, yes, of course it makes me money. That's great. But I appreciate that you put your trust in me. Right. That you are allowing me to help you make probably one of the largest purchases in your life. Yes. I understand that. That is big. I mean, some of that condos I'm selling are over a million dollars. Right. It's not change. Yeah. So I think that's where I'm trying to grow my sphere, my career. And that's the direction I think it's going to be good for my business. It's going to be good for my clients because, you know, I want to do this with gratitude. I want to do it where people understand that I understand this is a huge purchase and I'm going to be grateful for them. I'm going to do such a good job. I'm going to ask for help if I ever need it. Like yeah. I'm not afraid to put myself out there and be like, you know what? I do not know the answer to that question, but I will find it for you. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm trying to do to continue to build my niche and my specific business. And I think that's so important because, you know, I think that's what makes a business really succeed. Any business, whether it be real estate or any any type of business, is when you show gratitude, appreciation, when you when you act out in kindness and you you show that, you know what, I appreciate you as a client. I appreciate you for who you are. You know, I, you know, I'm I'm gracious that, you know, we had the time to have a conversation. And when we when people show an act of kindness, it goes a long way. People don't realize that. But you know, in our world, especially, you know, we, I see a lack of kindness, a lack of appreciation, um, in our society. And, you know, that, you know, that's one of the keys to success is, is showing that you appreciate the other person, you appreciate who they are, what they do and the the qualities they show, and you want to give something in return. So as a business, you want to do the best you can as a person to satisfy their needs and people Mm -hmm. pick up up on that. And that's what makes, you know, any business, whether it be real estate or whatever business succeed is, is our, our behavior, the way we act towards that other person. You know, it's not about making the deal. It's about caring about the person and wanting the best for that person. think what's your feelings on that and I think like it changes if somebody that I'm dealing with is maybe not of my same mindset Mm -hmm. if I'm constantly doing the right thing you know I'm gonna write them a note I'm gonna call them and just be like hey I'm just checking in I know we haven't made a decision yet what how are you feeling like are you nervous what's going on like letting them know that I care yes it starts to change their mindset So then they kind of come around to the way that I'm thinking because, you know, I'm trying to put it out there that like, I don't want to make this scary for you. Yeah. All I'm trying, I'm just trying to be your guide. Right. You have to make, like, I always tell people I'm in charge of all the paperwork. Yeah. And I will provide you with all the information. You are in charge of all the decisions. Right. And if you want to walk, you can. Like, this is not do or die for me. I just, I will not starve to death if we don't do this deal. So Mm -hmm. like, I feel like when I give up that control and I let that go, so they understand like, this is a total flow. And if at any point you're not feeling like cool about this, let's just walk. Yeah. Like I'm cool with it. And you decide you want to move to Arkansas. I don't care. Like you do you. Yeah. I'm doing me. So I feel like I give them this really comfortable feeling and a great mindset that I'm just here to help you. I'm super grateful. Then they change their mindset because I think it's like humans, they naturally reciprocate behavior. Mm -hmm. So if you're positive, if you're gracious and thoughtful, if I think, and you're smiling and, I really love doing this and I love my job. Yeah. It's hard for them to be mean or I don't yeah. want to enjoy this process. Even if they don't go through with it, they're like, wow, you know, Kendall really made me feel good. Yeah. So I think, and it makes me feel good. You know, it's right. just, 
it's all mindset. Like I never believed it until you, you physically have to do it. Yes. And then it like, it's so weird that you do it. Mm -hmm. What actually maybe sometimes makes you feel uncomfortable being on video sometimes makes me uncomfortable, but I love talking to you. So it's like, Oh, okay. So you get over, which I'm going to read you this. This is so funny that this came up. So on my little uh, planner that I've got Uh from Nelson Mandela. And it says, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. I love that. I mean, that's like, that is everything business. It has nothing to do with necessarily real estate, but mindset, right? Mindset, hundred percent. It's scary out there, but you know what? Do it. Put yourself out there. You don't have to always move forward, but if you just explore it and try it, you're never going to know unless you just try it. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's my mindset was I'm never going to get any business unless I try it. I might screw up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask for help. Right. And then that's just the more deals that you do and the more that you, the people that you meet, then you've got more experience and it just starts to roll. You just have to put yourself out there and you have to, I tell other agents that are newer, you know, it's consistency. It is. And that, and that is across any business. Yes. A hundred percent. If you're an entrepreneur, you have to be out there making calls, talking to people, going to networking events. How many podcasts are you doing? Like Stacy, if you did this once a quarter, right. would you have millions of followers? No, right. you have to be consistent and putting out content people like your content. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you have to constantly feed it because people are like, well, that's really interesting. Who should can have on next? Right. Exactly. So it goes across any business. Right. A hundred percent. You have to consistently be um, consistent and, and, and people don't, sometimes people slack and they, they, they don't realize, but you know, you have to consistently, especially as an entrepreneur, be consistent, you know, and, and I had one mentor that said, even if you could just put 15 minutes of phone calls a day, you have to a minimum of 15 minutes, you got to be consistent. And the same thing goes with any business and anything and, and making those contacts and, and, and feeding those contacts. And I love how you, you know, you, you, you say that you, you know, you, you talk to them, you feel what their needs are, you're able to communicate with them and you're able to show an act of kindness and gratitude and, and appreciation. All these things tie into a, a good relationship and, and it leads to, you know, success. Yeah. And people will work with no matter what business, real estate, any kind of business, they work with people that they trust. Yes. And people that they like. Yes. Nobody wants to work with somebody that for whatever reason, they find them off putting or whatever. So there's always an adjustment. Yeah. You know, I'm working with somebody that's a doctor or an engineer or uh, um, in some sort of very niche finance where they're very detail oriented. Yeah. I have to change how I'm working with them. So I know I have to provide them with lots of data and numbers. So I, I understand, I have to be able to read people. You have to shift yeah, But I think, you know, having the experience working with all these different people, as long as it doesn't matter if they're engineers or doctors or whatever they do. Yeah. I still going back to having the positive attitude show. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody right. wants community and to be cared for. Yeah. And I think, you know, you and I were talking about it earlier too. Nothing shows that more than the pandemic that we as humans need that sense of community. Yes. Um, and we want to feel connected. We do. So I try to make that connection on whatever level it is with whoever that other person is that I'm working with. So right. if they need me to be more detail oriented, I will adjust to be more detail oriented and give them more data and numbers. If they need me to be, um, more caring in the sense that they need me to call them constantly and reassure them, you know, Mm -hmm. what's going on, how are we doing? I I, I do that. So it's just figuring out, you know, each person's needs and what they want and being able to build that level of trust. Right. That they understand, you know, I'm here to service you, the deal, you, 
you know, your personality to try to make this as smooth as possible. Right. So we can get you into this wonderful condo that is going to provide you with this awesome lifestyle and have all these friends. And it's, it's, it's selling the dream. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I love it. So it's easy for me. And I think that's why it comes off naturally. Yes. Cause I, you know, I live what I'm selling. Right. Um, and it's super fun to sell in my building because when I have people that are coming in and they're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, everything, but I'm like, I live here. <laughs> All the doormen are like, hey, Kendall, hey, Kendall, what's going on? So I'm like, yeah. they're like, do you pay them? I'm like, technically, yes, I do. <laughs> I get away every month, but yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> they, um, it, so it's, I don't know. I, I love what I do. I think it's, it's so fun and it's fun to get, not only just to the end. So that's something oh. else I was looking at my phone. My phone was silently ringing. So it's after the deal. Yeah. So after the deal, it's not, you know, you sign the paper and see you later. Right. If you don't want to talk to me, you don't have to take my call, but I'm not going to let you go. Right. So, you know, every single client of mine in some form or fashion enters my life. Right. So, if, if you don't want to take my call, I'm still going to call you. I'm still going to leave messages. I'm going to send you a card on your home anniversary. If I know when your birthday is, I'm still going to send you a card. If you throw them away, that's fine. Right. But all of the people that I've dealt with, it's the ones that do continue to talk to me, you know, whether they're going through a renovation, I will call them. Okay. Have you picked your contractor? Do you feel comfortable? Do you want me to give you more names? I'll, Cause I've done this before. Right. Do you need a plumber? Do you need an HVAC guy? Like this is what we do. We're in real estate. We have all these contacts, you know, I'm not here to tell you, you have to use my guy or whatever. I'll give you three names. I'll give you six names. I don't care who you use. You pick whoever you want, but right. I'm here to be a resource for you. Yeah. So you understand, first of all, I'm not here just to close the deal. Right. Yes, I get paid to do that. And that's my job, but I will be your resource. And if you want to, I will be your friend forever. Like, you know, it's, yeah. if you're really cool and I like love your energy, of course I want you in my life. You right. have to choose if you want me in your life too. But like, you know, I almost think like real estate agents, sometimes people treat us like doctors, you know, like you, know, you talk to a doctor in a elevator and you're right. like, oh, got this thing, you know, on my neck. And they're like, oh God, you know, like I just got off work. But like real estate agents are the same way. Like people are like, oh, Kendall, what do you think about the market today? So yeah, we're always there to provide information. And I tell all my clients, like, this is what I'm here for. Right. I live this. I am your resource. If you want to call me and be like, what do you think about the market? Do you think it's a good time to sell? Then that's what I'm here for. This is why do this because I'm constantly looking at this information. I'm happy to be your resource. Exactly. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of like my thought on how I continue to treat clients afterwards. It, it never ends with the end of the deal with the signing of the contract for me. I'm mm-hmm. constantly going to be around whatever that resource may be. And, you know, if you need me for something else, like what's the coolest local restaurant you like and why I'm here for that too. (laughs) I love it. You know, you don't find many like real estate agents like that, you know, but you know what I could see just by the way you talk, you know, you found a passion and you made it your purpose and and like, you know, just by your actions, the way you talk, the way you look, the way you react, you know, you can see that, that this is something that you love to do, you know? I do. I love it. And I, I've been in sales my whole career and I mean, I have sold everything under the sun, the most unsexy mm. stuff ever <laughs> and in the, pack- the packaging business. Uh, that's not super sexy. Um, right. I've sold office supplies. The one, my last career corporate career um, mm-hmm. that transitioned me into real estate, it, it was natural. And it just, I feel like life just, it's kind of like this mm-hmm. and Some people will fight it. Yeah. I think it always, whatever your path is, it always kind of finds you. Yeah. Always been in sales, but the last job I was working for a company called Regis, which sells like temporary small offices, like ready-made offices in New York City. Right. And 
it's all and going back to relocating. So it's like all these people. So New York city, it's a melting pot. You know, I'm sitting at an office on park Avenue. Right. So they like Stacy, you come in and you say, you know what? Um, I have an office in New Jersey, but my specific business, we would like to have an office in New York city. Right. We want a city address. We want to have, you know, a presence in New York, New York's, you know, the big financial capital. Yeah. So you get a small office. Well, you might say, you know what? Um, do you know anybody that can help me find an apartment? Because mm-hmm. I'm thinking about moving to the city. So like I was doing that and I'm like, after the third person asked me, you know, they moved from San Francisco, somebody moved from Chicago. Somebody, I was like, ding, mm-hmm. like I'm going to be the real estate agent. Yeah. So I went to real estate school after work every day for two or three weeks, however long that took me. I can't remember how long it took me. It wasn't that right. bad. But, so then I was doing what everybody else does in New York. I had two jobs. I was selling <laughs> this during the day and showing apartments on the weekends and doing my little side hustle. And then it got big enough that I was able to go out on my own. But right. it was, you know, life takes you at ebbs and it flows. And I've always been in sales, but it was like, I kind of felt like, okay, this feels so natural. Yeah. And then I love real estate. I mean, first of all, looking at New York was so fun. I got to sell these insane penthouses and these beautiful, and like going in, you know, going into a $20 million apartment in New York City. People are like, oh my gosh, what were they like? I'm like, "Eh, if I had 20 million bucks, it's kind of like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'd probably live here. Um, But it was so fun to go and be able to, you know, it's like trying on the fancy dress that you yeah. can't afford and you get to wear it out one night and take it right. back or something. Like yeah, I yeah. got to see the apartment without buying it and yeah. then walk away. Right. And that was so fun. That was like where New York real estate was very fun for me was yeah. being able to be exposed to that. And, you know, I got to meet Ryan Serhant and all those other guys on, you know, the whatever million dollar listing, I think. Yeah, and it was yeah. fun. Because we'd be out and they'd be like, oh, what'd you do today? I was like, oh, I had a show on Brian Serhan. They're like, what? Like, he's really fun and funny and he's sarcastic and he was, you know, fun to do a showing with. But I, I've lived a pretty colorful life, but it's been fun to kind of see, I guess, where I've navigated. And I just now let go. I think I'm just going where I naturally, I think I, I, I'm good at it. So yes. The, you know, the Dallas real estate just evolved because I think I just allowed who I really am come out. And then I've naturally now drawn these clients and people in because yeah. like that they see how passionate I am about it and how much I right. love it. Yeah. And I turned my little niche into like this little clubhouse of fun people that we love exchanging ideas and information. And we network together too. Like I've got you know, girlfriends that are in the wine business and artists, and I try to help them with their business. And yeah, whether I do a deal with them or not is fine, but I'll be like, I'll come and I'll support you. Yeah. I don't really care if you use me or not, but it's fun. Right. And I've got great friends and it's just such a great community. I love it. That's amazing. I'm going to get you to move here. <laughs> <laughs> you might, you convinced me already. My goodness. Yeah. I'm starting to, I'm starting to like the idea. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If you had to take like a couple of takeaways from everything we discussed today, like what would be some important factors you'd really want the listeners to like, you know, take away with them today? Oh, that's kind of a hard question. Um, I guess, you know, overarching lesson would be, you know, don't fight your natural path. I think as I've gotten older, I think it was like all these podcasts that I listened to. And now I don't remember which one I heard it from, but it's like what you're supposed to be doing is constantly out there. You just have to have like your mind and your heart open to understand what your passion is. Yeah. And I think, you know, not, I don't regret at all being in corporate America. I look back and I'm like, I wish I would have jumped earlier, you know, but those all created who I am today. Right. So I guess lesson number one is, you know, if you keep kind of 
seeing the same things coming into your life, then you need to pay attention because yeah. it's either a career change, uh, a passion, maybe it's a new hobby for you or something like that. It's yeah. supposed to be, it's supposed to be in your life. And I think we become successful doing the things that we're passionate about, obviously. So, yeah. you know, when people say, oh yeah, I can you could sell snow to an Eskimo. I'm like, it's not, it has nothing to do with that. Yes. I'm very talented at what I do, Yeah, but I'm talented at what I do because I love it. And I'm also yeah. talented at what I do because I'm a great listener. Yeah. That's so I know we talked a lot, but if I'm with a client and I make the first call, I'm you and mm -hmm. I ask all the questions because I need to listen to what, what they're looking for. Yeah. You know, so you go through the basics of, I want a four bedroom of this. I want a high rise. I want to be in a penthouse, blah, 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 all the fluff. Right. And then you ask the, if you can wave a magic wand and I gave you $5 million in cash to buy this set four bedroom penthouse, whatever you want in Dallas. Yeah. What does it look like and why? Like, those are the kind of questions I ask mm -hmm. that I think you need to go back to mindset. Right. You need to create the mindset in your client. What does it matter what industry you're in? Exactly. To get them into a state where they're going to think about it, not just in a monetary, they're going to think about it in, Where's my life going to be? What does my life look like in five years? Yes. Um, changing mindset when you're making a decision, taking them out of, oh my God, this is a $5 million purchase. Yeah. Take that away and try to get them to the base of who they are as a person. Right. And why they're making the decision. That is what makes you good at what you do or whatever career that is. Yeah. And so I think, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a good lesson that I've learned in my career. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. And I think what you and I talked about earlier too, kind of going back to mindset, but I need to be positive. Mm -hmm. We need to be positive. <clears throat> as much as humanly possible. Right. Even if we're having, <clears throat> excuse me, a bad day, because what you, what I'm putting out my energy mm -hmm. is what you're seeing and what you're receiving. Exactly. You know, my husband and I this morning, not a great morning. Not everything goes right all the time. You spill right. coffee, whatever. You're frustrated. The laundry smelled like mildew because we left it in overnight. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I had this. And I'm like, okay, well, that was then. I've got a podcast. I need people. Like, I, what do I want to do with you and your viewers? I want to add value. Exactly. I want your viewers to have something to go, okay, well, maybe they're not in the market for a condo or a high rise, but they don't give a crap, crap about Dallas. That's fine. What can I do? Is there some nugget that I can tell them that they're going to say, oh, well, she talked about mindset and I'm in whatever. Right. An electrical business. Yeah. And it's going to change the way they do their business. Exactly. I want to add value to your listeners through not just my business, through how I'm getting the business and how I'm creating the business because right. it doesn't matter what industry we're in. Exactly. It's very true. You know, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You know, we, we really pretty much need to follow the same steps in order to reach success, you know, and it's really, you know, mindset is one of them and everything you talked about, all these different types of um, strategies and tools that you mentioned really can apply, not just to real estate, but to any any business, you know, and we really, the way we appear, the way we feel, the energy we give off that, you know, how we approach people, the kindness, the way we show how we care, you know, following through, you know, 
not just thrown to the curb, but you know, getting in touch with them later on, letting them know that you're they're important to you. All these things matter. You know, everything you mentioned today, you know, are are things that anybody could apply to their own lives. And I'm so glad yeah. you brought all these things up. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> to build on that, you know, and talking about how much I didn't enjoy video at first, <clears throat> it's just it's content yeah. and, you know, going back to, you know, consistency content, like nobody knows that, well, not nobody, but they all know it now, but they all know that mindset's great. But if I'm not here telling you about it, right. <laughs> and the gentleman that you had on before, like you, we need to constantly be putting out and I think cons a consistent message because yeah. being positive, having a great mindset, not just hearing it from me, hearing it from some of your other guests on there. It's if you keep hearing it again and again and again, then you're like, okay, well, God, every podcast I'm turning on now is all talking about this. Yeah. Well, there's something to it. Right. Because all of my podcasts I listen to kind of are in the same vein. Yeah. And I'm like, it's all kind of coming to me. I think I'm, I'm drawn to it, but it's yeah. also because I'm putting it out there. Exactly. So I think, again, going back to community, we're forming our own community. Stacy, mm -hmm. you've got your own listeners. We have our community. You have your community, all of your listeners. They're listening to you and to us because we're telling them it works. Right. You know, and it's like, Oh, well, now I've heard it 30 times. I've heard it 50 times. Apparently this is a thing and it works. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what industry that we're in. You exactly. have to have, you have to push out tons and tons and tons of content because you don't know who's listening that day. So you have right. to do 30 podcasts a month or however many you need to do in order to get your message out there and have people go, oh, I, I keep hearing this. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I think that's also part of it. And part of what I'm doing to build my business is I can't just do one podcast and be like, okay, yeah, <laughs> you know, I have to do this constantly Yeah, and, and try to get to as many people as I can, not just to sell real estate and to be positive, but, you know, to tell people, you know, if you're in Dallas, we love this. We love this lifestyle and right. I want to be around. Kendall, because she obviously knows the cool places to be in Turtle Creek, where she is, and there's great restaurants and parks. So, mm -hmm. you know what? If you just want to call me for that, call me for that. I'm right. happy to tell you all about the great places. That's awesome. I, you know, this has been an amazing um, time with you. I, I love your spontaneity. I love how, you know, you have such a great outlook on everything. I love how you're so caring, you know, and, uh, and you have such great entrepreneurial advice. You know, the, the advice you shared today was outstanding. I really have to say thank you for taking the time to share this with our listeners, because this is something that can be applied to anything in, in anybody's life. So thank you so much. Now, if people want to contact you, where can they go to contact you? Uh, I'm pretty much on all social media. I am setting up TikTok now. Um, so it's Kendall Travis. I'm with Dave Perry Miller Real Estate. And my email is Kendall Travis, all one word, at DavePerryMiller.com. Um, my cell phone, I still have a New York City cell phone. I'm not giving that up. 917-991-5452. Yeah. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Kendall Sowers Travis. I'm all over the place. So um, yeah, you can find me anywhere. I have my own website, Kendall. It's kendalltravis.daveperrymiller.com. Oh, if you just Google me, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. This I'm here for it. This has been amazing. Oh my goodness. I love, I You're love so how you, to talk to. <laughs> you are too. You know, I hope, you know, you'll be back. You know, we can hit a lot of more topics because you have a lot of great insight and 
and, you know, we can go dive deeper and, and go into a lot of more, you know, uh, things that on a, on a, on a deeper level to help others, you know, get to the point where you are today. So thank you so much for sharing everything you have. And I really enjoyed this time with you. I did too. Thank you so much, Stacey. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. You too. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yes. <laughs>